use the, the information at the moment for targeting adver uh, advertisements at you, but uh, obviously that information, because it's so incredibly precise about you, could be very, very damaging if it got out, or it was stolen, or it was abused later. So I think uh, having rules, very, very strong rules, about uh, the, this information not being collected and internet service providers just not getting that information is really important, just as it's important that information service providers should not stop, should not selectively only deliver your packets to some, to places that they want you to do business with. Yeah. Uh, ah, if, yes. Uh, so I, I don't want to be very negative. I think that there are technological possibilities. We should uh, use them uh, uh, in the best possible manner. Uh, uh, what I would like also to say is that currently the opacity of the, the infrastructure is a problem. Okay? We, I cannot, as a specialist, I cannot say if the system is secure if we don't understand how the system is built. Okay? And this is a problem. If, for this reason, personally, I am in favor of open software. Okay? At least you see what you are using, and, and we can analyze it. Of course, a risk if you use open software is that uh, this is visible to everybody, and uh, uh, so you can, uh, so malvolent people can analyze it also, etc. But these are the rules of the game, I, I, I would say. I am in favor of open systems. I am in favor of the application of standards. Today we have uh, uh, standards uh, that we call common criteria. Uh, the only systems that are certified according to the standards are smart cards today, to the best of my knowledge. And they are certified level five or four. And the standards have seven levels. Okay, I don't know any products certified at level seven. So level seven means that you are absolutely sure that, okay, there is no ha possibility, I mean, of harm or, or whatever, okay? So there is a lot to be done in that direction. I think more, more transparency in systems is very important. And this can be enforced by governments and organizations, should be enforced. Two more questions. Uh, mic microphone. Yes. There's, there's, there's a lady coming, Tim. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to get there first. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tim, uh, I just to uh, remind you came from uh, CERN and you must know very well that uh, now CERN is a leader uh, pushing uh, uh, the grid uh, in uh, not only in Europe but also in uh, uh, in the world and uh, many items uh, which uh, was presented in, in your talk are more or less uh, realized uh, in frames of a uh, grid uh, construction of grid infrastructure uh, which uh, uh, is uh, more or less uh, covers uh, all items and uh, how you can comment uh, interaction between uh, web science and uh, grid well it's interesting isn't it, that the grid has been I think developed with too little connection between the people developing the, the grid and the web, and the, in particular the data, web of data. The grid has had a very particular specialization <coughs> for high energy physics. High energy physics has a particularly huge data rate. It has particularly, for example, for students. So there are some, it may, you could, you could argue that, there's some, that there are problems that the grid was designed which really are sort of rather extreme. But, uh, and so that uh, technology is justifiably separate from the data grid, the technology from, from the data, the web of data, uh, from linked open data. But I think there's a there's an issue. I think it's the, pro the problem is we have different communities, and uh, yes, I think that every system that has grid data should have a Sparkle server, which is a semantic web endpoint, which would allow anybody to uh, to, uh, to access the data. Just as for the web, 
as I said, if you, put a, if, you, if you draw a line through the web and say, well, on this side, it's going to be academic data, on this side, it'll be commercial data, it wouldn't work. Similarly, if you draw a line through the data and say, this sort of data we'll have on the grid and this sort of we'll have on the semantic web servers, then the whole thing is dysfunctional. So integrating the two, I think hopefully that we'll, that we'll find that a lot of useful work has been done by both sides and we'll be able to put some shim layers in uh, that either the modeling of data which has been done on the data side will naturally translate into uh, to, to semantic web ontologies that wherever grid services exist, then uh, Sparkle services, which are semantic, standard semantic web services, can be provided and so on. So I'd, you know, I think it would be great if we saw some uh, conferences, more conferences bringing people together across. And I know there's a lot of a set of people who do specifically spending their time trying to make sure that, that, that those two communities are bridged and the two technologies are bridged as well as possible. Thank you. Uh, one last question. The gentleman at the corner. Yes, uh, just a very simple question. I think do not move. <laughs> yes, thank you. Both gentlemen have been speaking about uh, security and uh, how to, to build sec uh, security and all the, uh, that kind of systems. Uh, how is the possibility today to, to build a very secure mobile f phone? It is a very simple question. I heard that President Obama was just uh, convinced by his uh, uh, security people to give up his three uh, Blackberries Blackberry. and give a new and take take a new one, which has been uh, in, in instructed by his security counselor. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, that's that's a very. Okay, this qu question I, can, I could give a long, a long answer, technical answer to that. But just to summarize, I think that we don't know how to build secure systems today. Okay, I can give you many, many examples of cryptographic protocols that we've been using in the internet, okay? And uh, for which we found the flows 10, 15 years after, after we've been, been using uh, them. If uh, you uh, Google, uh, say, uh, vulnerability reports in Google, okay, you will see that every day you have, we discover flaws in systems, okay? So you say, ah, take care, Internet Explorer is not safe. I mean, no, Internet, Mozilla, uh, okay, Adobe Reader, etc. okay? So the security question is a very complex one, and it's a very po complex one, why? Because it's a transversal question. In order to build secure systems, we should understand how hard the hardware works, how operating systems work, how we write programs. If we don't understand how the application software works, we cannot guarantee, okay? And there are always vulnerabilities in systems. So I think that the president, of, I mean the, the, the people who advised President Obama to change or to, to, to take care, they were right. Tim? Yes, uh, no, you're covered. I'm so, uh, with this, I think the time is now drawing near for bringing this evening, or this part of the evening, to a conclusion by thanking our speakers, uh, Wendy and Tim, <laughs> and Joseph, by thanking the foundation of the Hellenic world for making this all possible. And just before, just before you're released uh, to, ha to get a drink in your hand, allow me to say something specifically addressed to the students in the audience, and I see many of them. And this I shall say in Greek. Αυτά που ακούσατε απόψε και αυτά που θα ακούσετε αύριο και μεθαύριο, πάρτε τα μαζί σας, κρατήστε τα και μέσα από αυτά σηκώστε τα βλέμματά σας ψηλά, όσο πιο ψηλά μπορείτε. Και ίσως ε, και σίγου τραγουδήστε λίγο μέσα σας. Βλέμμα ψηλά και όλα τα φτάνω. Ελάτε να πάμε και την Ελλάδα πιο πάνω. Στο χέρι σας είναι, πάμε δεξίωση. <κλήσει>